There's a spectrum of emotions that you may or may not have heard of before. But first, what is an emotion? Many would say an emotion is a feeling, but then what's a feeling? An emotion? Well, you may think your fundamental emotions are hardwired and universal, that we all have a crayon box with the same set of colors, anger, fear, happiness, etc. Well, this isn't true. Some cultures don't have the full box of emotions. On a Pacific island, the native Tahitians don't have a concept of sadness. So if you lived on a gorgeous island in the Pacific, you'd probably feel sadness a lot less often, but the natives literally don't possess that emotion. When Tahitians are in a situation that we would describe as sad, they feel ill, troubled, fatigued, or unenthusiastic, all of which are covered by the broader term peapea. Many other cultures also have emotions you and I have never seen before. Norwegians have a concept for a joy of falling in love, calling it forelskit. Gigil, a Filipino word for the urge to hug something that is cute. And the Japanese emotion concept, arigata meiwaku, is felt when someone has done you a favor that you didn't want them to do, but you're required to feel grateful anyway. If you think that peyapeya and sadness are the same thing, let me ask you a question. Would you mistake regret for a headache? Would you confuse disappointment with mourning? I didn't think so. Could you call them all sad? I guess, but would that feel remotely accurate to you? Again, I doubt it. Many people don't feel Ferelskit for the same reason they don't speak Norwegian. They were never taught it. If you had been raised somewhere different, you might feel something different. Emotions vary between people, and they vary dramatically between cultures. But if you only have concepts for anger, happiness, and sadness, then that's all you're ever going to see. Often we pick up these concepts just from living in a culture. Others were taught explicitly as children, and they're transmitted from one person to the next, and from one generation to the next. But what can help improve emotional intelligence? It's a big understatement to say that if the only emotion concepts you recognize are me feel good and me feel bad, you're not going to be very emotionally intelligent. I see red, blue, and green, and interior decorator sees magenta, indigo, and cyan. The more time you take to distinguish these emotions you feel, to recognize them as distinct and different, the more emotionally intelligent you will become. This is called emotional granularity. Similar to the interior decorator, emotionally intelligent people don't say me feel good. They distinguish between happy, ecstatic, joyful, and elated. They're the connoisseur of emotions. And believe it or not, having lower emotional granularity is associated with a lot of bad things. People who have major depressive disorder, social anxiety disorder, eating disorders, autism spectrum disorders, borderline personality disorders, or just experience more anxiety and depressed feelings all tend to exhibit lower granularity for negative emotion. More importantly, when you're able to finally discern what you're feeling, you're able to do something constructive to deal with the problems causing them. If the only negative emotion concept you have is me feel bad, you're going to have a difficult time making yourself feel better. Higher emotional granularity also has other benefits for a satisfying life. In a collection of scientific studies, people who could distinguish finally among their unpleasant feelings were 30% more flexible when regulating their emotions less likely to drink excessively when stressed, and less likely to retaliate aggressively against someone who has hurt them. So, to sum up, emotions are concepts. They're not hardwired nor universal. They're learned. And emotional intelligence starts with emotional granularity. If your doctor came back with a diagnosis of, you're sick, you wouldn't be too happy. You need to be able to distinguish between certain emotions. And that's all. Thanks for listening.